Hello my friends and welcome back to another Baldur's Gate 3 build guide. Today I'm going to be talking you through my pick for the best lore friendly build for Tactician for Jahira. One of the things that I dislike about Baldur's Gate 3 is that the two characters that return from previous games, Minsk and Jahira, both use the generic build for their classes, whether that be Ranger or Druid, and end up with stat spreads and builds that are quite out of... Uh, step for what those characters actually should be doing according to their histories and lore. So I want to fix those in such a way that they're still viable on Tactician. I've already done one of these for Minsk, which you can check out, and we're going to do Jahira now. So in previous games, Jahira was a fighter druid multi-class, but that d isn't as bad as it sounds if you're familiar with 5th edition or Baldur's Gate 3 multi-classing, because in 2nd edition, Dungeons and Dragons, a multi-class character more or less got all the abilities of both classes that you had, at the cost of leveling slower than single-class characters. So Jahira was both a fighter and a druid, had all the abilities of both of those, just at the cost of being lower level than the rest of the party. Obviously, we can't replicate that exactly in 5th edition, but I've put together a build that lets her do what she wants to do, which is mix it up in heavy armor with uh, scimitars in close range, doing two-weapon fighting while supporting herself with druid spellcasting, and that's still very powerful and viable on Tactician. By the time you get Jahira, she should be about level 7 or 8, so this build is intended to really come into its own starting at level 8 and then be valuable through the endgame. It's, I think, viable if you wanted to make this build starting from level 1, and I'll show you the, the leveling order for what we're doing, but this is really intended as a level 8 plus build, since that's when Jahira will uh, show up. I will also say this build is probably not solo tactician viable, although it is very powerful... Um, as a part of a party, and Jahira will contribute very well when in a party with this build, but the overall damage output and combo that you get is not intended to let you solo tactician with this build. All right, let's get right into it. So the first thing we have to do is actually change her class. Because we want to be a fighter druid multi-class, and we are actually going with both fighter and druid, it's far better for us to start with fighter than it is to start with druid. The reason for this is that fighters get constitution save proficiency uh, as one of their save proficiencies, which is incredibly powerful for any spellcasting class and is by far the most important save proficiency to have. The second most important one is wisdom, which druids get and fighters don't, but con save proficiency is going to stop you from failing concentration on spells, and since one of the things that we will be doing is always concentrating on a spell, that's very powerful to have access to for this character. So we're going to start by leveling up in Fighter. Since we want to be dual-wielding weapons, we're going to take two-weapon fighting, allowing us to make attacks with our offhand, and for our ability spread, we're actually going to stay closer to the default fighter ability spread than I usually would. Um, we're dropping our dexterity down to 10, since we intend to be in heavy armor, and going to 16 constitution, 17 strength, which you'll I normally uh, advise not getting odd numbers, but you'll see why in a, in a few levels here, and 14 wisdom. 14 wisdom will be plenty to allow us to cast supporting druid spells. We won't have very good spell DCs, so you won't usually be using offensive druid spells with this build, but the supporting druid spells are very powerful and will allow Jahira to fulfill her role very well. If you want a build variation on this, you can use elixirs or the uh, gauntlets of hill giant strength, drop strength to 8 and take wisdom up to 16, and then you'll put your level up feats into wisdom as you level and have 20 wisdom. Um, unfortunately, you can't get really high wisdom, really high constitution, and really high strength without using the elixirs, but that is an option if that's something that you don't mind doing. For our abilities, we are definitely... She already gets athletics, which is great. That's the most important one for a, a strength-based fighter build. And I highly recommend putting uh, one into Perception. You should have that in your party. And because we'll have okay wisdom, Jahira will make an excellent user of Perception. And Acrobatics mostly doesn't come up in the game. So this is what we are going to go with. You could also move this Survival into Acrobatics if you think you would prefer it that way. But um, overall, I think this is going to be the best ability spread. Let's level up. 
At Fighter Level 2, we gain access to Action Surge, the single best ability in the game. Gaining a second action means we're going to be outputting twice the number of attacks every single round, which is, of course, extremely powerful. Level 3 Fighter, we have a choice of our Fighter subclass, and as almost always, I'm going to recommend taking Battlemaster here. Battlemaster maneuvers are extremely powerful and give you a lot of optionality. Also, I think it fits very well with Jahira's uh, personality as, you know, a, a wizened veteran of many campaigns. Having these complex combat maneuvers at her disposal makes perfect sense to me. The best uh, Battlemaster maneuvers, as always, there are four that stand out ahead of the others. Trip attack, repost, um, menacing attack, and precision attack. Normally, you really want precision attack, but it's less important for this character because we aren't using Great Weapon Master, which precision attack is mostly intended to mitigate. That being said, I think you only really want one of Menacing Attack or Trip Attack. In this case, I think you're still usually better off with Trip Attack because it lets you knock down an enemy um, and then make your subsequent attacks that round at advantage. But Menacing Attack is also very powerful because Frightened is just a really good condition, and both allow you to do an extra d8 of damage, so they are extremely useful in that way. And I still think you should probably have Precision Attack, so I would recommend this setup, but any three of those four is going to work very well. That's more or less a matter of personal preference. At Fighter Level 4, we get access to our first feat, and the feat that we are going to go with is Heavy Armor Master, which is why we took an odd number of points in Strength. And also why we're a Strength-based build, even though we could theoretically be a Finesse Weapons build and use Dexterity, but Strength will give us both better Athletics, which is really important, and also allows us to make use of the one bonus Strength from Heavy Armor Master. At the point in the game where you get Jahira, most attacks are going to be magical, but there's still enough non-magical damage that decreasing this by 3 is really nice, and we're going to have a source of temporary hit points later in the game, and damage reduction combos really well with temporary hit points, so that we can keep those temporary hit points active and keep the boosts from our temporary hit points going. So Heavy Armor Master has few downsides and a ton of upsides for this character. Fighter level 5, we get extra attack, obviously an excellent ability, it lets us really go nuts with the number of attacks we're making in a round. At this point we have two main hand attacks and an offhand attack, plus two more main hand attacks if we action surge, for five total attacks in the round. All of which are made at our full ability usage, because for our second feat, we are going to take dual wielder. You can use two weapon fightings even if your weapons aren't light, which allows you access to some of the better one-handed weapons in the game. And you get a plus one bonus to armor class, which is extremely powerful. So between this and the two weapon fighting fighting style that we got from Fighter, our uh, armor class will be decent in heavy armor with the dual wielder armor class bonus. We can use some of the better weapons in the game as a result of having dual wielder, and we have a decent amount of damage reduction from Heavy Armor Master. So we've really put together a character that's quite durable and also outputs a decent amount of damage as a fighter. But now we're going to add in the druid half of the character. Rather than taking this level of fighter, we're going to take a single level of druid. For our cantrip selection, we are going to go with uh, resistance or guidance. Either of those is really useful, and we need, for various reasons, a concentration cantrip. So it has to be one of these two. Um, my advice is probably to just take both of them, because you aren't going to be using Thorn Whip as, since your wisdom is not very high. Um, and similarly, Shillelagh won't have a huge advantage to your character as well, because your spellcasting modifier is wisdom, and you already have really good strength for attacking with. So we can probably just take both of these, though what you take as your second cantrip, again, I think is up to you. Any of these options are good, although I would avoid poison spray because the constitution save is based on your wisdom, and so you won't be doing damage with that that often. 
For our prepared spells, we're going to go with Longstrider. As a melee character, having the extra movement speed is really important, and Longstrider just being able to give your entire party the Longstrider buff is one of the best things about having a druid in your party. Um, Healing Word is extremely useful because it's a bonus action. And then I also really like having Fog Cloud. If you are a melee character, you can get opponents into Fog Cloud and blind them. Then that is, while you stand on the outskirts of the, the Fog Cloud, that is very powerful. And there are often cases where you can block a doorway with your fighter, put a Fog Cloud on the other side of it, and it makes it very hard for you to be attacked by ranged characters um, and prevents melee characters from getting into place and actually hitting you because when they're attacking with disadvantage against your quite high AC, they're often going to miss. So this is my s suggestion for your default prepared spells, although remember you can swap these around at any time out of combat, so take what is good for the situation, of course. Um, it's also worth mentioning that you want to avoid ones that have that require the opponents to make a save because your save DC is quite low with only 14 wisdom. At level 2, this is where the build comes online. Like I said, this build was intended to reach its sort of... to come online at level 8, and then it's just going to keep getting stronger from here, but this is where the build really starts to function. The reason for this is our Druid subclass, and we get to take the Circle of the Spores subclass. Circle of the Spores gives us access to the Symbiotic Entity class feature. For a wild shape charge, of which we get two per short rest, so you get a lot of these, you get uh, eight temporary hit points is what it says here in the tooltip, but actually it's four temporary hit points per druid level. Since we intend to level as a druid for the rest of our levels, that will go from eight up to 24 at level 12, which is a quite high number of temporary hit points. But more importantly, while they're active, we get an additional d6 necrotic damage with every attack. This is super powerful on this character because we have so many attacks per round, so you're going to be doing minimum of three attacks, five with action surge, adding in the extra d6 of necrotic damage on top of whatever bonuses you get from your weapons means that this character's damage output in melee is actually quite high, and that will let Jahira really stand in melee and mix it up using Symbiotic Entity. You also, of course, get the tanking abilities from this, from any damage reduction that your heavy armor might come with, and from Heavy Armor Master, which lets you keep these temporary hit points online for much longer and lets them go further. The more damage reduction you have, the more valuable each hit point on your character is, so the higher your sort of effective HP is. Um, because if we have five damage reduction from our Heavy Armor Master and two damage reduction from our heavy armor, which is a pretty common setup, and opponents are attacking for, say, 10 damage each, that doubles the number of attacks they need to make in order to defeat your character. So each hit point is twice as valuable when you're having incoming damage, and makes it much more valuable for your character to be able to keep, much more possible for your character to be able to keep these temporary hit points online, and thus continue to output more damage with Symbiotic Entity. I recommend not really using Halo of Spores. The con save is based on your wisdom, so the opponents will often succeed. Um, and it takes your reaction, which you would rather use for a repost attack, which, uh, when attacked by an enemy, which you can then hit back for symbiotic entity damage. Prepared spells, we leave pretty much the same. Druid level 3, you gain access to level 2 spells. There aren't a ton that are really valuable for you, but one that is particularly good is Flaming Sphere. Um, Flaming Sphere lets you have a whole summon, and enemies will often target it. And it's a bonus action to make it attack. Usually you're going to want to use your bonus action just to attack with your offhand weapon rather than the Flaming Sphere. But this is still quite valuable to have. It's also a concentration spell. Another which is going to be good for us for a reason that I will show you shortly. And another uh, concentration spell that I think is very valuable at level 2 is Spike Growth. It, while 
Uh, this has no saving throw, so it doesn't use your wisdom at all. So even though our wisdom is quite low, enemies will still take these the 2d4 damage for every 5 feet they move. That's really powerful. And it's a huge AoE. A 20-foot radius is massive and can stop enemies from closing to melee with you very easily or keep enemies from getting away if you want to prevent a ranged enemy from leaving contact with you. They have to stand in the spike growth and walk slowly away. You also will have your temporary hit points and much higher hit point total than most ranged or spellcasting enemies. So if you have to follow them into the spike growth, assuming that you don't have some way to become immune to difficult terrain, then you will that will be a favorable trade for you is if you are both taking damage. Spike growth is super powerful as a spell because it has no save and a huge AoE. Level 4 Druid, we get our next feat, and we're just going to max out on strength. This increases our damage output significantly. We'll take whatever for our uh, cantrip. And at level 5 Druid, we get access to third level spells. The best of these, similar to spike growth, is plant growth. This makes a another 20-foot radius AoE, so it's massive, and... It quarters enemy movement speed, which means that a standard 30-foot move speed enemy is moving 7.5 feet. That's uh, basically a crawl. So any melee enemies you can make take several turns to get to you. If you play plant growth and if you place it behind ranged enemies, you can always catch them. Very powerful look for uses of this ability. It's also not concentration, which is nice since you have other concentration spells that you like. You also get access to Animate Dead, which does give you quite a lot of optionality as a character because you can bring along summons. Summons have tons of utility in this game. You can use them to block doorways. Um, their attacks can be made at, at advantage if you trip an enemy and then attack it with your summon. You can use them to provide advantage or sneak attack damage to a rogue that you have in your party. You can use them to lock down spellcasters. There's all sorts of uses for summons and having access to them on a character is always powerful. Another thing that's kind of worth mentioning is that Call Lightning is a concentration effect, which in combination with Create or Destroy Water, if you prepare both of these, even though your opponent will still be will be making their save almost every round against this, because your save DC is low, if they have the wet condition from the water, they take double damage from lightning effects. So this is a minimum of 30 damage every turn. Um, or a mi minimum of, of uh, 3d10 doubled every turn, which is... So, uh, excuse me. A minimum of 3d10 every turn, because it's halved and then doubled again, um, which will often be... Uh, which averages out to 16.5 damage, which is a quite consistent source of ranged damage output. It's not something that I would go out of my way to use in particular, but it is very useful if you need a ranged option against certain enemies. Um, that being said, getting a weapon the, with the throwing property is also really nice for strength, but this is a, a totally reasonable way to add a ranged element to this build, which is mostly going to be otherwise a melee build. Another good choice is just enhance leap, because Increasing your jumping distance, which is already extremely high thanks to your very high strength, lets you get into position easier. Finally, at Druid level 6, you get access to another form of zombie, so you actually are going to get quite a lot of zombies. You also get the Wild Shape Owl Bear, which is a very useful repositioning tool. It does turn off your symbiotic entity so you will lose the bonus damage. But if you watched my other druid video called The Owl Bear Flies, then I talk a lot about how the owl bear, thanks to its bonus action jump, you can wild shape into it as an action and then jump 60 feet as a bonus action, is also a teleport spell. So keep in mind that that is extremely useful for moving around the battlefield. Um, while you mostly won't be wild shaping with this build, the owl bear wild shape has a lot of utility. You also end up with 106 hit points thanks to lots of fighter levels and your high constitution, which is a quite decent number of hit points, plus 24 at all times from Symbiotic Entity. I'm also going to talk about several items that are very useful for this character. In particular, there's one that I think is far and away the best item for this character, thanks to what might be a bit of a glitch, but it does work extremely well with this character's abilities, so we'll talk about that. 
First, though, let's put it together. So when we cast Symbiotic Entity on ourselves, we have 24 hit points and 5 damage reduction, so it's uh, 3 damage reduction. And when we put on most heavy armor, such as this adamantian splint armor, we're going to have incoming damage be reduced by 2 in most cases. Um, so with the 5 damage reduction and 18 base AC, then when we equip 2 weapons we'll have 19 base AC, we're relatively hard to kill. Some of the best weapons for this character are anything that has bonus damage dice. The best is probably the Devotee's Mace, which you get from Divine Intervention on a Cleric Ally. Um, this will be available pretty soon after you get Jahira, so I would definitely recommend having this one equipped. Um, this gives you a bonus action healing ability as well, and also has 1d8 radiant damage in addition to its base damage. So given the number of attacks you're making in a round, this is very powerful. Any other weapon is still going to have an additional d6 on it. Um, just like this random short sword will do quite decent damage because it has d6 base damage, 5 from your strength, and then the extra d6 necrotic from your symbiotic entity, or you could use something like this that has an extra die of cold damage on it. Basically anything with additional damage dice is really powerful, uh, especially since you'll be making a lot of your attacks with advantage, so you're very likely to critically hit, thanks to tripping enemies with Battlemaster. So when we get our full damage combo out, we're making five attacks, let's say using this setup for d6 plus 8 plus d6 plus d8, four of those attacks, plus an additional offhand attack. So this is going to average out to something like 120 damage in a round if we use action surge. Um, one thing that I should also mention, whenever you're dual wielding on a character, you want to toggle dual wielding to off, because by default it will eat your bonus action to make the offhand attack whenever you make a main hand attack. If you turn dual wielding off, you get to choose when you make your offhand attack. And obviously it's better to choose to make an offhand attack, whether or not to make an offhand attack, than to have the game decide that for you. So you definitely want dual wielding always toggled to off. Um, some other items that are really good, so the adamantine splint armor I already mentioned. Uh, any gloves, such as these dar dark justicier gauntlets that add dice to your damage output are going to be incredibly powerful. Um, this is going to be on your Nova turn an extra 5d4 damage, which obviously adds up very quickly. Another item that I think is really good and that you will get if you have Jahira through a story event is this Shadow Blade Ring. This lets you summon a Shadow Blade as a bonus action, um, which does 2d8 psychic damage and converts your offhand attack into psychic damage and you also add your strength to that still plus the necrotic damage that can be very useful for getting around a lot of resistances as well as just being a very high base damage offhand weapon let me uh, short rest so we can actually demonstrate that one of the nice things is that it also just appears automatically in your offhand so you can see this does 9 to 31 damage by default, and because it's all split across multiple damage dice, um, it's actually going to average a very high number of that. The average is going to be, um, what's that, 4.5 twice, it, so 2d8 averages to 9 damage, plus 5 is 14, plus 3.5, plus 2.5, so that is an average of 19 damage just from that offhand attack. Possible I did some of the addition slightly wrong there, but the ballpark is right. Um, you get to add an additional d8 damage anytime you use a superiority die, and so that's very powerful. There's another item that I think is the most important item on this character, though, and that is this set of boots, the Vital Conduit boots, because of the way it interacts with Spore Shield. So Vital Conduit, when the wearer casts a spell that requires concentration, they gain 8 temporary hit points. Normally you cannot restore temporary hit points. But for whatever reason, I'm not certain if this is a bug or um, intended with Spore Shield, if you have taken Spore Shield damage... Come on. No, we're having trouble taking damage because of our damage reduction, so you can see that that happening as well. <laughs> we, can, we can wander around our spike growth basically forever, taking almost no damage because of the, the high damage reduction on our character. 
if you have taken damage on your spore shield and then gain temporary hit points from the vital conduit boots, it recharges your spore shield, which you can do with any concentration spell, including concentration cantrips. So by casting guidance on ourselves, we regain eight hit points on our spore shield. This is an incredibly powerful combo that lets you restore temporary hit points, something that you normally can't do. And then as you reduce the incoming damage, thanks to heavy armor master and damage reduction on your heavy armor, you gain a ton of bonus value from these temporary hit points. So putting it all together, you have a very durable character with very high damage output, lots of attacks per round, lots of options in combat, and I think it fits the flavor of Jahira very well. All right, my friends, I hope that you've enjoyed this build guide for Jahira. Um, I think this is one of the best ways that we can get all of the aspects of her character together into one build, and I hope that you enjoy playing it in your games. As always, thank you so much for watching, and if you have enjoyed the video, do please feel free to leave a like and hit the comment, you know, leave a comment. Both of those things help a ton with the algorithm. Any comments you leave or likes you, you leave make YouTube recommend videos much more, so that's the best way to help out small channels if you are interested in doing so, um, whether that be mine or any others. And of course, you can subscribe to my channel for more of this and other strategy game videos. Cheers, my friends. I'll catch you next time.